the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I got the inspiration for this message several years ago when I watched Aaron Couch and Joe Lawhorn replace the back door to the sacristy. It's been quite a while ago. When I first got to St. Stephen's, in addition to sealing daylight, one quickly realized that the old door was about four inches longer than his standard. When Aaron got ready to put a new door in, he had to remember the carpenter's rule more than once. When he was framing the space and preparing the molding and the weather stripping to accommodate the, do, uh, the new door. Uh, to put it simply, he had to measure twice and cut once. That is the carpenter's rule. And I think a carpenter's rule is another way to count the costs. So keep the carpenter's rule in mind as this message progress progresses, moves on. Many years ago in Scotland, there was a young athlete by the name of Eric Little, and he was put to a test. We just got through having the Olympics, and we probably saw a lot of tests in the Olympic Games. Probably for every Olympic athlete, there was at least one test that was out there. When I talk about an athlete being put to the test, therefore, I'm probably not bringing any kind of news to you, because athletes are put to the test all the time. Yet, training, coaching, endurance, tests, all that is in play in athletics. But the kind of test that Eric Little was put to was not by a coach or by events as much as by his God. If you've ever read the book or seen the movie Chariots of Fire, you know something of Eric Little's story. This was a young person who could run like the wind. He was someone who never lost a race. Me, I can't imagine. I don't know about you, people who are watching, people who are in church. I don't know if you, if you can relate to that, the idea of being that good at something, that talented, that fast. Well, going into the Olympic Games, it appeared that Eric Little was a lot to win a medal. Pretty good chance he might even win a gold medal. All he had to do was stay healthy, mind his own business, run in his own way. And then the test came. No sooner did Eric Little get to France after taking the short trip across the English Channel, someone told him that his qualifying race was to be run on Sunday. Seems very quaint in 21st century America where Sunday youth sports have become a way of life and many fall church activities have to be scheduled with an eye toward pro football games and when they kick off and this is especially going to be true this year with the Rams back in town. So for many of us, if not most of us, there doesn't seem to be a problem here. Uh, church for many people today becomes the thing that you do when there's nothing else better to do. So this may not be as big of a deal, but for Eric Little, at that particular time in his life, it was a big deal. He was a devout Scottish Presbyterian. He was so devout that when his running days were through, he became a missionary to China. For Eric Little, the idea of racing on Sunday was out of the question. And the question had been settled many years before when he had made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. But you can imagine what happened next. There were high-level meetings with Olympic officials and even the Prince of Wales. And one of them even went so far as to suggest that it was arrogance to put one's personal convictions above the glory of the British crown. And Eric Little responded that the arrogance lies with one who would try to force another to act against his personal convictions. For Eric Little was a person who knew what really mattered. He understood that the price of that gold medal was not a price too high for him to pay. My question for those watching, 
my question for those who will listen to this in worship is simply this. Does anything matter that much to you? Does anything matter that much to me? What matters in our Christian lives individually and as a church congregation? I would submit that how we respond to that question matters because our answers tell us whether we're mere followers of Jesus Christ or disciples. There's a difference. Someone was talking to a great scholar one time about a younger person and was quoted as saying, so-and-so tells me she was one of your students. And the teacher answered, she may have attended my lectures, but she was not one of my students. Anyone who's been to school knows there's a big difference between simply going to class and being a student. Christ has to be paid. Isn't that true of anything in life? Take marriage. We look at the preamble to the marriage right on page 423 of the Book of Common Prayer. The person's about to marry each other. Those who are there to witness the vows are told that marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. That's a direct quote from the Book of Common Prayer. There's a bottom line in marriage. The two who are about to become one must count the costs of their commitment. There's a bottom line in education. Individuals who put themselves forward as students must count the costs associated with learning. There's a bottom line in athletics. Athletes must count physical, mental, and emotional costs. Today's lesson from the 14th chapter of St. Luke, Jesus was heading to Jerusalem, and He was on His way to the cross. And no doubt at that particular point in Jesus' ministry, there were people who were dazzled, they were dazzled by his healings, by his teaching. There was a buzz of worldly power in the air. People were dazzled. They may have even been intoxicated. But in the most worldly way possible, our Lord tried to prepare those who would be disciples. People like you, people like me, for something bigger than any of us. Something so good, so true, so important that it demands everything we have. Jesus tells us in worldly terms that His way is not our way or not the way of the world. There's no free lunch. Everything has a cost that has to be counted or paid. Carpenter's rule applies to life as well as to sacristy doors. That's what discipleship is all about. That's what separates disciples from mere followers. Hence the bumper sticker for today. Cost of faith must be counted and paid in order to run the race of faith. Brothers and sisters, by God's grace, we are called to be God's people. We receive God's blessings, spiritual gifts in great abundance. And we have a responsibility to share the first fruits of our abundance with others, both inside and outside our immediate community of faith. Labor Day is upon us. Our summer of rest and transition behind us. And I pray that God would give us grace to live into the fullness of the Christian life as it is reflected in our baptismal covenant. And above all, may we use the carpenter's rule to count the cost of faith and then to run the race of faith with boldness to take our place as disciples of the risen Lord in whose name we pray. Amen.